Atlantic episode fuck, I don't 500. Know, 40, 40, 45, I think. Episode 45. Danny Harvey, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good. You? Uh, just awesome living inside this house for day number 7001. And uh, yeah, just about going nuts. But hang in there, you. man. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. It's you had a great day? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Good. Working from awesome. home as usual. Yeah. Yeah, good. Awesome. Well, we got a great episode. Uh, thanks for joining us, Danny. Uh, got a great episode tonight. Two people yep. that we both know very well. Uh, two very accomplished people in two different, very accomplished. I guess they're both very accomplished in two different facets of life, I guess. First being Brad McNamara, uh, you know, a guy from Picto. He's made a name for himself in the sports world, working out West for a hell of a long time now. Some he like high level athletes, NFL or CFL, NHL. Um, CHL, you know, university athletes, tons and tons of high level kids from around Canada. So it'd be great to chat with him. And then yep. we got uh, Evan English joining us. Obviously, the online security ex expert, a, a buddy of ours who, who runs his own business and uh, just a super good fella. So we're going to happy to bring him on. Perfect. Yeah. How was your day? Mine? Good. Good. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Busy. Busy with work today. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, it's good. But, yeah, you know. Good, 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 good. Let's good. bring Brad on, otherwise known as Boo. Or I don't. Let's see what he goes by. Brad McNamara, <laughs> folks. How are you, sir? Hey, 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 guys. How's it going? Good. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, my man. No problem. I still go. I still go by Boo as well. So. I figured. I figured that. Yeah, I'm always going to yeah. call you Boo. It's kind of yeah. feel weird calling you Brad. Actually, yeah, it's it's it, a lot of that. A lot of the athletes and you know people out west call me Bradley because it was just kind of weird to be 30 years old introducing myself as Boo. But <laughs> you know, like, I don't really have to come up with a backstory to it and stuff like that. So yeah, you no, know, it's yeah. it's you know it's but they kind of usually learn when they're around my other friends. Well, it's you know what who the hell is Boo? So yeah, you know, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. the, the way to go. Yeah, well, cool. Thanks for joining us, dude. You've again, like I said in the intro, and Danny, you're aware of it. You, you've known Boo your whole life as well, and you've made a hell of a name for yourself. I want to ask you, how did you get involved? I know the story. Lots of the at home know the story, but what drew you to the whole training, high level athletes, kind of sports strength and conditioning? You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, like you, you guys both know, I grew up you know, playing a lot of sports and, mm -hmm. um, in our hometown, I, th I think at the time we didn't even have a gym. So, I mean, it wasn't like I really grew, right. grew, grew up wanting to, you know, train athletes or anything like that. I remember me and Cotter and Jay Bird used to go to mission club and do biceps and trugs, you know, every day. And that was about <laughs> as much as I knew about training at the time. But, uh, you know, go, going to St. Evax, I took kinesiology and then kind of from there, I just, you know, kind of veered down a path and, when I originally, I took a year off university and I moved to Alberta just to kind of pay off some of my university debt. And uh, from there, I kind of, you know, that's when the Oilers made their big, big playoff run. And uh, I fell in love with the city and it was like the best city ever at that point. Like I wasn't really working and I was enjoying, you know, they went to the game seven in the Stanley Cup finals. My parents were worried I wasn't going to finish university, but I ended up coming home and graduating. And then right away I went back out and, and, uh, and started working and it wasn't initially that I, I started working with the athletes. I started working at a regular gym. Um, wasn't doing very, wasn't making a whole lot of money and it just mm -hmm. really wa wasn't for me. Like he, I'm not a, I'm not a huge guy and you know, people don't look at me and, and think that, you know, I'm this big, huge trainer or anything like that. So what I did is, is I found out who was training Jerome McGinley at the time, who was a guy that I looked up to and uh, I showed up on his doorstep. His name is Dan. And I just asked if I could volunteer with him. And uh, I worked cool. another. I worked another full time job. And the funny story I tell everyone this story. But my very first day that I went there, um, it was like eight o'clock in the morning. I didn't have a car at the time. I was taking a bus out there, and I showed up, and he was walking out the door as I walked in. And I said, uh, "I was like, where are you going?" He's like, "We're going for breakfast." And I was like, "Okay, sweet." He's like, "You're not coming." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." And then, uh, and then he said, uh, "He said, by the way, you have a bus of forty kids coming in ten minutes." He's like, "Good luck." And then he got in the car, and he and he took off. And this is my first day at the gym, so I didn't even know. I I never even used a piece of equipment at this gym before. It was like an old facility and you know, big wow. open space. But at that point, I was just working one on one with clients, like you know. The forty-year-old moms and stuff like that. So yeah. to ha to have a bus full of forty, you know, forty kids, grade six, seven, and eight. I was <laughs> That's just like, nuts. what's going yeah. on? So, Trial by fire. 
<laughs> yeah. So the, yeah. the funny thing is, is yeah, that's what we always say, sink or swim, right? Just kind of yeah. throw into the fire. But he came back an hour and a half later. He's like, didn't we get hurt? And I was like, no. Nope. He's like, all right, we can start work then. And that's right. literally how it kind of started. So then from there, Ooh, you know, I, I never knew that story. Yeah. yeah so I, I volunteered with him for six months and, you know, I kind of had to prove myself. I would literally just cold call. I would basically cold call every local team and I would offer them free sessions. And then they would come in, they would train with me. And I kind of build up my name that way until I built up enough business to, that he basically hired me. Cause I was the first person that he ever hired. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Like I had some of the like grade eight athletes were showing me some of the drills we were doing. So it was, it was kind of crazy. So, and then I, you know, obviously just worked, worked my way up and mm -hmm. we ended up becoming business partners and, you know, just kind of went from there. So I was, Super I was, successful. yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty fortunate, like with, with timing. And then I think it's just, I, I don't think many people would have went out there and volunteered for six months to, to kind of learn their, their craft. And yeah. it was just something that, that I kind of always felt is, I had to earn that job. I had to earn that career. People will always say like, you're, you're so lucky, but I mean, it's not luck. It's, it's, you know, showing that you're valuable and showing that you can bring business to the table and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So yeah. hustle, man. Hustle. Yeah. That's, that's a great story. That is yeah. a fantastic story. That's I don't crazy. know if a lot of people know that at home. No, no. And like, I think I, the first time, you know, I was always a hustler. I, I think I used to sell when I was the first person in Picto with M power. So I used to sell burn CDs for like 20 bucks a pop. So <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was kind of like I, yeah. I've been I've been hustling, you know. My, my I have an English might have something to say about that later, though. Yeah, well, you, you know what? Big Big Dog took very good pride in being the first you person did. I picked up with M Power. So I remember that was <laughs> that was awesome. Big, right yeah. on. Yeah. Did you were you working out there when you were volunteering as well? Yeah, so like I was working at like a local gym. It was almost like a YMCA oh, yeah. or whatever. So. I was still working there full time and I was working, uh, training the athletes. So I was like literally working my friends. I was, I was like 22. All my mm -hmm. other friends, you know, they're like welders, apprentices and welders, helpers. And they're just like, what? Like I was getting up at like six in the morning every day and working too. They were just like, you're crazy, bro. Like I wasn't God. getting paid. So, so then, you know, a couple of years later, those, you know, people like, oh, you're so lucky. But it was like, no, it was, it was, it was a yeah. bagger. It was a oh, bagger yeah. for sure. It'd be, it'd be tough to do that now with two kids for sure. But I was young and full of energy. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at it though, who, like yeah. I, the way I look at it though, you're, you're ahead of the game. So you look at how, how popular that stuff is now it's everywhere, but yeah. you were doing that before really. And obviously people in like NHL and these, they had strength and conditioning coaches. They've been around for a long time, but it was, it's it almost seems like you were one of the first people to like, kind of like take it to like a, yeah. So, well, the thing is, is like I, you couldn't just go out and put out a resume to be a strength and condition coach. Like yeah. there, was, there, there was, there was no jobs like that. Like the thing that I always say that I was very lucky with is my business partner, Dan, he was mentored by Ben Johnson's strength condition coach. So Char Charlie Francis was his name. So Dan, my business partner is one of the smartest guys you would ever meet. And he would just, you know, qu ask questions and yeah. questions. And he was always studying. Like you, you would come into the office and he would have eight different textbooks on the table and he'd be comparing this graph to that graph and this graph to that graph. And it was, it was something that I've never seen before. So when I, the thing that I loved most about him is that, you know, he came from a baseball background. He went to the university of Nebraska and, um, he basically, you know, speed and power was the big thing, right? Um, you, you see, you see it now; it's a lot bigger. Yeah. But when I, when I first started, he was the only person I've ever seen have hockey players sprinting. Yeah, yeah. And and we we had a tr we we built a track in our facility, and like all the other hockey players were doing, you know, exercise bikes and this and that, and like, and we just created the fastest athletes around. So yeah. that was that was kind of the thing that that I really enjoyed about it is is just a pure speed element to it. It wasn't like we were just in there like banging around weights is like we we're making guys fast because at that point that's kind of two years or three years after the lockout when they basically changed all the rules of the nhl and the mm -hmm. nhl got very fast yeah. so so you know i had i had one guy kyle chipshire i don't know if you remember that name yeah. he was, yeah. he, was a, he was a he was a first round draft pick captain of team canada world juniors and he got drafted i think it was like 2004 or something he was a first round draft pick and right around that time, they switched all the rules. And he would always say, he's like, if they had kept all those old rules, like he probably would have been a first liner in the NHL. After they changed those rules to the... 
fighting to stay in the NHL. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. He, <clears throat> yeah, he, he was fighting to stay in the NHL, like, because he had to change his game completely. Right. So, you know, it was, it's kind of crazy now because that now I have, I have, I have guys that are, you know, I've worked with like Ennis and Spurgeon where I remember one summer they came back because we used to try to get them to be heavier, like, you know, 173 and, and stuff like that. And I remember one year they came back and they were like, no, it's too heavy. Like they want to be like 163, 165. So oh, it was like geez. when those, you know, when those guys are saying like, you know, 170 or 175 was too heavy, that was like a whole nother element. Whereas like these guys even notice that seven or eight pounds. Yeah slows them down so it was you know it's been pretty cool to kind of grow up in, in that moment of speed and power and i'm not a big guy and you know i was always a you know a quick guy I wasn't powerful at the point but yeah. it, it's cool to be able to train guys like that because yeah, it kind of, of fits fits right into you know what i do best right so that's awesome yeah it's uh it's definitely and i think it aligns for every sport like for anybody you know out there who's looking to get some extra training or, or get in touch with people who can train you at a high level you're, you're certainly someone who who can help you know not just in, not just in hockey you know you've helped luke you've helped jujitsu mma athletes you've helped baseball football you know like yeah. i guess at the end of the day hey danny like uh, you know uh, it's like riding a bike i'm sure the the fundamentals are the same yeah it's all it's yeah i guess everybody has a little bit uh, something different they want to get out of it. like but. For sure. Like, I mean, the one thing, like I worked with Ryan Jimmo for a long time. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that I did notice about MMA athletes, it was very, it was a lot different because we train on energy systems. So it's like, I would have them tap in their, their central nervous system one day, right? So do a lot of speed and power stuff. The next day would be more tempo. The problem with MMA is that they would be doing four different things in one day. They'd be doing speed and power, then yeah. they'd be doing jujitsu, then they'd be doing, you know, striking and then it was like so even if we worked their energy systems around it they were going to tap into it later anyways and it was just very hard because those guys were they they have a hard time not going balls out with everything that they do <laughs> yeah. as they get closer so that was something different and i think that's why jimmo really loved what we did because it was a lot more science-based as opposed to just like bagging it all the time yeah. and, you know like you know just trying to kill people it's you know it's a lot different than that now it's like I always say like sometimes the best workouts aren't the one you're dripping sweat from. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's learning, it's educating, it's, you know, feeling your body and stuff like that. So that's, those are the things that I always loved about it. And, you know, working with athletes from the football side to the UFC, you know, Jim was in the UFC for a little while to, you know, the NHL, like I got a lot of experience baseball. We did a lot of baseball guys. That's, that's my, my business partner's background is he played semi-professional baseball and coach college baseball. Oh, okay. So what he did is when he came back to, he was in the States for a long time coaching and he was like, man, Canadians are such bad athletes. Like they, you know, they just, they just don't know how to train. And they like beer. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yes, and, and what ended yeah. up happening is he came back and he coached the midget baseball team that I think the year prior, they went three and 33 or something like that. And he, he always tells me the story that he had those guys doing two a days because they were hosting nationals the next year. So they brought him back to coach. They went like 33 and three and they ended up like, came coming second in nationals wow. and he said he's he said every parent hated him because he had those guys doing two a days <laughs> all summer he, yeah. he he started the gym he, he had a portable you know like a trailer and he put the trailer beside the baseball diamond and he made a weight room in the trailer and that's where the guys would lift and train and like oh, that's wow. that's how he started so it was like it, it was kind of cool to hear his perspective and because back then when he came back like i said you, you can go and there, there's a lot of people that you know we always will say when people call us trainers, we correct them pretty quick, right? Like we're like, we're not trainers. We're strength and conditioning coach. Like I could go get a trainer certificate in, you know, four hours. Right. So, yeah, or like, okay. like a weekend or a couple weekends. So coaching is one of those things where it's, it's not really regulated. Like someone yeah. could, someone could say they're a strength and conditioning coach, but like no one's going to really, it's not yeah, like, no. it's not yeah. like if you're a dental assistant cleaning teeth, you, you can't just go and say you're a dentist. It just doesn't, yeah. doesn't work yeah. like that. So yeah. No, it's 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 a different world for sure. Yeah, it is. It's interesting. So, were you like when you started with with Dan? Uh, were you doing? Uh, were you like working with MMA athletes at that time, or was that something that came later? So, so the, the the first thing that happened is is I started working there, and I started kind of watching and observing. And at that point, he was working with Aginla, so Aginla was his big client. Like he he worked with Aginla for like twelve or fifteen years or something. So cool. that, that, that was pretty cool. My first summer I'm in there and like I'm working, you know, 
alongside a Ginla and like helping him out with some stuff. And obviously I wasn't training him cause I didn't know anything then, but, yeah. and then what ended up happening is, as you guys, you know, Luke and Luke, uh, Hayabusa ended up open up beside us. So Hayabusa shared the same, the Hayabusa training center shared the same building as us. And then they kind of came over They they would see all the athletes that we'd be training. And then, mm-hmm. you know, they started, you know, taking, their strength conditioning a little bit more serious because up until that point they didn't really do they just yeah. use use their jujitsu or the wrestling or whatever for their you know conditioning right yeah. so that was kind of where you know things kind of took place with oh, that yeah. but yeah yeah that's amazing to see like i don't know if you've noticed it danny but and, and you, you talk to anybody like who's an old school like i look like i'm 40 years old just coming up this year so I, like yeah, we're I'm getting, getting up old there. you know what <laughs> i mean like so you think about playing hockey back in the day and how like all I did was float. Like I, there was no system for me. I no, don't know. I just chased the puck around. I don't puck. <laughs> yeah. I the puck. Yeah. Got to me, I'll try to score. I don't know. Yeah. But you see now, like how, like at a young age, you look at my brother or uh, you know other. I don't know if your brother is involved or people like Brian or yeah. people that all coach at like small levels. How fucking sports has really it's changed crazy, because yeah. of people like you guys. Yeah, like there's you know there's whole new industries out there. Like I yeah. have friends. I have friends who are just coaching mentors. I have like, they, they actually get paid to like mentor coaches or like, wow. I have like, I have friends that just do skill work. They only like growing up playing hockey. Like I don't ever remember having like a skill no. practice. We didn't just no. have like a skill day where we're like jumping over horseshoes. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, do the horseshoe and do the circles. And it's, like, you know, and training was legit one, like a hockey ball outside. Passing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. And you, you know what? Like I, I think I was very lucky to be in, in Edmonton because there, there's a lot of pro hockey players around that area per capita. You know what I mean? So I think in, in that area, you know, it's, it's definitely developed. There's a lot of former pro guys that will come back. There's a lot of guys, you know, played high level like WHL and college and NCAA. So they come back and they start their own little businesses. And, you know, it's kind of just – it's it's a big market. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. You uh, – Another thing that people may or may not know you're involved in, but uh, again, you're involved in a lot of things, but Apollo Clothing, um, you know, you guys are quite popular out in Edmonton in, in the West Coast and down into the States and stuff. What's going on with with you guys in that regard? Yeah, that was just something kind of fun, you know what I mean? Like me and actually a buddy from Stellarton there, Maddie Gordon McDonald, uh, we, he's a, he was a welder and I own the gym. So we'd always want to do something together, but we're just like, there's no way that welding and training, it doesn't really align besides yeah. building medicine ball racks or something. So, yeah. um, we ended up just like coming up with an idea and actually, you know, funny stories. One of my NHL guys gave me the name for it. Uh, like Tyler Ennis helped me out with the name. So oh, we nice. were, we were, we were sitting down stretching one day and I was telling them we're going to start a hack company at that time. And, uh, you know, he, he told me that I could use his, his fake band name that he had in his back pocket there in case he ever made it. And, and it just happened to be Apollo. And, you know, I, I have a huge astronaut tattoo and it just kind of really, it made sense. So then I called up Maddie and we're just like, all right, let's do this. And, you know, obviously with my network and all the young athletes that I train and pro athletes, like we were able to blow it up pretty good. And at one point we, we did a deal. I thought we were on Shark Tank. We did a deal with uh, the, guy, the guys that own the West 7th Mall. Nice. So, they, you know, they're like billionaires and, and they're actually part owners of our company for a little while. But, you know, that's that's a super tough industry. And yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm way more way more passionate about, you know, training athletes and stuff. It's just yeah. something like something on the side. Keep you. Yeah, it's, you it's, know, it's, like it's, it's, it's for me. I, I always say it's my creative outlet, you know, like like I'm, I'm not like I don't I don't really get to be super creative in training. Like that's a lot of methods and programs and education yeah. and stuff where where I like tattoos. I love music like. So clothing is kind of a thing where it's, you know, it's, it's fun. Like it's, you know, it, it takes my mind away from, you know, other things, but mainly probably why you guys do something like this as well. Yeah, right? Like totally, man. it's, it's, it's nice to have other things to look forward to yeah. than just, you know, your career or whatever. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it's cool. It's cool to be, be focused in different areas and that way, you know, you can meet way more people. It's, it's, it's a tool, right? So, yeah. 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 So you yeah. did all, those were all original designs, eh? Yeah, like I, I, a good friend of mine is a graphic designer. Okay. And uh, he's, he's been amazing, man. He's everything that I've kind of, you know, put down, like he comes to life and he's, he's been, you know, our biggest supporter since day one. So, you know, I'm not that creative. Like I can't, I can't just sit on a computer and do some sick designs. I don't but know like, about that, dude. Definitely the most stylish guy ever came out of here. Wow. Well, I don't know about sure. that, but come on now. Yeah. 
Give maybe just maybe everyone else, everyone else in Pecto just doesn't care. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's no, it's it's yeah. like uh, no, it's it's good, man. Like I've like I said, I've you know ever since I was young, just with the I used to buy clothes on eBay way back in the day, yeah, like because you know I everyone if you, you go to what was it thrifties at the time, yeah. It's like you'd go buy a sweater there, and then there'd be six guys in your class with the same <laughs> sweater on. Oh, man. So it's yeah. just kind of you know which which stripe going which way or whatever, right? So that was just why I get into it. But you know that's just always been a a, a fun thing for me and a creative outlet. And you know I, I like making clothes, and you know it's just going down a rabbit hole and and learning a whole new industry that you 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 figure out how hard it really is and how hard it yeah. is to make money, and and then you you know. You maneuver from there. Like what I do now is I actually make a lot of custom clothes for like teams and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I find it, I find, I actually find it easier to sell 500 of these to an organization than it is to sell like two. So it's yeah, like, yeah. it's kind of, you know, you kind of, you kind of learn, you know, because now that I have two kids, like I don't have a lot of time to waste anymore. Like, so I have to kind of like be effective with my time and make yeah. sure that, you know, I'm not just wasting time to waste time where it's before I could do that a little bit. Now it's like, okay, like, if I'm going to spend time on something, A, I got to really love it. B, I got to make some money to put food on the table. Yeah. Or C, is, you know, it's just for enjoyment or, you know, extra or curricular, or curricular, right? So you yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, it's true though. You know, if you like I say that all the time, like people are always like, oh, you know, you're always coming up with ideas. Well, what the fuck? Yeah. What's the point, man? Like, yeah, what's it's... the idea? Like, I want to make money. Like, yeah, that's, it's, it's, <laughs> It's like, you, you get to that point like where the fun isn't fun anymore if you're not you know I mean there's a lot of hours spent doing things that don't generate you money right so it's at that point you know you're just like holy frig like how do you how do you make money like yeah. and then and that's it's so competitive in every yeah. regard every regard everybody's trying to, like it's a hard world. It is. And like, I think, you know, that, that's what makes the extra stuff fun because if you can generate money and, you know, you know, have some fun money or whatever like that, yeah. then it's, you know, it's, that's, that makes it, you know, worthwhile to do. But it's one of those things where, you know, even for me pivoting a few times in the clothing industry where it's like, you know, like for me, I don't like have an inventory anymore. I don't yeah. like, you know, because then you're just, by the time you sell it all, it feels like you don't even made your, you didn't even make your money back. So Such four times. Yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 uh, you know, I've, I've definitely gone through a lot of changes in that and, you know, definitely made a ton of mistakes and definitely lost a lot of money, definitely lost more money than I've made for sure. But yeah. I've, I've met way more people than I could have ever imagined by doing it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, it yeah. just goes to show, and Danny, I don't know. How, it, actually, I do know how you feel about this. Yeah. Like, at this, going through, like you just said, but at this time, what we're dealing with, like right now yeah. in the world, like yeah. take all the money in the world, doesn't matter. You doesn't can't matter. escape this. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. the more yeah. money you have actually right now, people are saying, why aren't celebrities donating? Yeah. Probably because they're losing a shit ton of money right now. Yeah, right? exactly. And what's well, like, I mean, people don't know what's going to be happening. Like, well, like yeah, said, exactly. Stock we're, markets. We're talking, we're yeah. talking with, you know, with when we're going to be open, re able to open the gym. And, you know, some people are saying not until September. Some people are saying May 14th. And it's like, you know, it's, this is our bread and butter time. Like we grind all year long to basically make our big money in the off season. Right. So yeah. it's like, so to basically just maybe not have an off season, it definitely, you know, it's, it definitely hurts. I mean, everyone right now is hurting. So it's, you know, it's, at least it's a consolation to know that like, there's not too many people out there crushing it right now. You know what I mean? Like everyone's just kind of like, everyone's kind of just like doing their thing and, you know, enjoying maybe some more time with the family. Like I think that's yeah. been a, a bonus yeah. with it is, you know, oh, it is for sure. I, I've had more suffers with my family in the past, you know, two months than I have in the past six years, you know? Oh, so it's, wow. well, so, so yes, some people just, you know, they're so married to their work and stuff like that. Yeah. They don't, you know, something like this forces them to take time off and spend with yeah. their family and stuff. It's awesome. It's good. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not, you know, you know what I no, mean? It's not good, no. but it's, it's good it's, in it's, a way. It's, it's a different kind of good. It's, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like you said, you just gain some perspective and, and you know, you yeah. start to enjoy some different things. And, and I mean, I think the one good thing that could come out of it is that, you know, you start to enjoy the little things a lot more, you know what I mean? And, yeah. it, and I think, you know, I think that's where it's going to be. It's, it's going to be definitely a, you know, I just have a hard time just reading all like the, the conspiracy stuff. Like, it's just the rabbit holes. No, it's <laughs> it's, it's so, so crazy. There's, a, there's a lot of that going around right now. Like, I'm I've, trying I've, to limit I've my never, time. Like, 
like I like I like reading stuff, and you know what? Like some of it, you know, it kind of interests you a little bit because sure there, there's obviously some crazy stuff going on. But it's like, man, like that's I think that's the worst part about this whole COVID nineteen is just like what that's done to the world. And the best thing is, like I said, spending time with with the family, right? Yeah. Uh, well, even course. things like this, like how often, like everybody texts now, not too often. Like when yeah. was the next time legit you'd be like Facetime? Let's Facetime my buddy. Yeah. You know, like no, for just sure. having grown yeah. men, but now like we everybody does it to one another. Like Evan and I do it like every couple of days. You know, like it's yeah. just it's it's yeah, one it's, of those things. I think it's brought a lot of really old school traditions maybe back like like know? talking on the phone well, you know, yeah. what I mean? like, something so yeah. simple like yeah that we were yeah. talking about that the other day me and my buddies like how like they i have friends who live all across the world like in abu dhabi and taiwan yeah. and stuff and we never ever used to speak yeah. on the phone or anything until all this stuff yeah. happens yeah. now we have these big zoom calls and stuff like that and it's awesome yeah like, it's great yeah, talking it's, to everybody but yeah like I said, it'll be it'll be a different world when you know, like when people are able to <laughs> when people are able to see each other again. It's like there's gonna be we're either not gonna be able to ever like hug again, or we're gonna yeah, just right. be or we're gonna be melting the first hug that you give. Eh? It's just gonna be like <laughs> I keep thinking about it and I can't get it out of my head. What are the poor single male men gonna do? Yeah, they're screwed. I, it's yeah, it's not good. Oh, yeah, it's like no, Tinder, it's, like you're gonna just be like swipe and swipe all day. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's it's gotta be like I said, <laughs> it's gotta be a different. You know, if it, I'd I'd probably be going pretty crazy if I didn't have my family and, and stuff oh, like yeah. that too. So yeah, you know, it definitely definitely keeps you busy and makes the days go by a lot faster than they probably could. But you know, it's yeah, I'm I'm just kind of curious to see what kind of all happens because of this, like. Yo, I, I I get I get anxiety going to the grocery store. That's for sure. Oh, it's <laughs> insane! It's crazy. Oh. You guys are infected, so it probably takes you about six weeks in the the speedy lane. Oh, it's so, oh man! Well, Dude, you, I, you, you don't know whether to go buy people. Oh, I know. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know you're just like, pushing them. You feel like a criminal. <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah. Like, well, I got bad. I get bad allergies too. So the other day I was in there and I just started having a sneeze attack oh, before oh, I went in, and I'm just like, yeah. I actually, ended up, I ended up forgetting like six things that I needed to get because I just like I got to get the hell out of here before like everyone just like, oh, yeah. starts like shooting off. Yeah, me. it's the <laughs> truth. Just all your stuff yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, just, it's the like, truth. Like, it, get me like, out of here. God forbid awesome. you. God forbid you have to cough or something oh. like. It's scary. Like, you better hold just, that in. I just like I throw the arm up like this, yeah. and it's just like it's Thumbs just over. do Starts whatever you can. Up. Yeah, it's, it's what are you it, doing? Yeah. Oh, you Who, just get the eyeballs. Yeah. So I, I, the hard thing for me though is I used to bring my son grocery shopping with me every time I went, and every time I go, he's like, "Daddy, can I come?" I'm just like, "No, bro. Like you, you can't." Like it was actually the work we actually uh, saw saw my cousin's little kids outside the other day for the first time, and. I let Dax out of the car for a second. He's like, "Daddy, are are my germs all gone now?" Like he thinks like he's like. Uh, yeah. So oh, it's, yeah. I think yeah, it's kind of sad. Like I mean, they don't know what's going on, right? He's only yeah. four, so. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's hard to believe it for those kids. You know, like for us, you know, like growing up, it was the World War, the, yeah. the wars that you heard about. You know that. So it'll be for them. Hopefully, it's nothing worse. You know, but you know, it'll be definitely one of those things people remember for a long oh, time. No, yeah. well, yeah. look at schools, man. Like never, ever, like since I was born or any no. of us, like have we ever seen anything like this? Like with schools, big it's canceled. showed a lot of. It showed a lot of colors, though. Like a lot of things can now be done from home. Yeah. Like the health yeah. system. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've been dealing with that bullshit for years. That healthcare system, and that mental health system, also yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Seriously. You know, things like that can be cleaned up for this kind of, you know, so it can bring some good things for, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 I mean, I think when I, I grasped the reality of it, when they canceled all, like the NHL and they like, that was like, holy shit. Yeah. This is, it's real. Last is like, you know, yeah. that was everyone, kind of, you know, I've been following it Sports, you know, for a man. while. Like in January, I started kind of following on Twitter and stuff like that. But then it's like, you know, you, when they cancel sports and they cancel school and they're just like, you know, I had yeah. a bunch of my young athletes you know, up in, I, I fly to Yellowknife quite a bit and train athletes up there and they were having like the Canada winter games, but it's called the Arctic winter games. And it was three days before and they were ready to go and they canceled the whole thing and they didn't Jeez. postpone it. They canceled. Some of these kids were waiting four years ago to, to that. Oh man. So I'm just like, Oh my God, uh, like these poor kids. Like yeah. it's just like, that's the thing, you know, you feel bad for kids that are graduating. Or, yeah. That's, that's, you know, there's a lot of people affected in a lot of hard ways. So hopefully we yeah. can come out of it, man. And no, in a for sure. Way. 
for sure. Yeah. So, but, uh, so what's the future hold for Brad? You know what? Like uh, uh, most people, I'm, I'm not back on the East Coast for a while now. I mean, obviously, like our gym's non-operational for now. So, I mean, I think my, my big goal is, you know, I, I definitely want to eventually be helping some athletes in, in the local area. Like I'm around here now and, um, you know, just – I just don't think they have the access to the things that the kids yeah. in other areas have. So, I mean, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've, I've kind of been at the, t- not at the top, but it's like, I've, I've trained the top athletes that I could have ever imagined, like in the NHL and all that stuff. It's like, to me, it's like, I've kind of already done all that. So now it's like, what's the next phase and, you know, mm-hmm. what's going to make me happy and, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So those are the things I'm really, really thinking about and, you know, just seeing where I want to go with it and, I, I know that there's definitely a market around here. I know, you know, growing up around here, there's some amazing athletes. Yeah, there's um, a lot of high level athletes. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, they're, they just, they just don't have that access. And I, I don't think they, they have someone around here that, you know, I'm sure they yeah. have a lot of people actually that they care about getting them there, but it's like, if you don't know what to do, you don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the one good thing about where I've been is just the exposure to the, the sheer volume of athletes. Like I've, yeah. I've worked with probably 10,000, like we, we have 150, you know, athletes in our off season program every single year. And we work with about 25 teams in the, in the winter. So that's like 20 kids a team. And you know, it's, it's close to like 700 kids a year that, that come through our facility. And it's just me and my, my business partner that work with most of them. So, um, you know, it just the amount of volume and, and seeing, you know, what different athletes need to be exposed to and what different, you know, type of methods you need to use with different athletes you know it's some kids need a good kick in the butt and some kids you know need to be called a little bit you know know, some kids need to be you know cheered on so it's it would just regardless it's not about you know turning everyone into pro athletes it's just about keeping them keeping keeping them busy i guess and keeping them out of trouble maybe like you know instilling like good work ethic because that's one thing that's definitely lacking a little bit and you know with with uh the new generation i mean i can't speak from everywhere like you know but I, I just think that, you know, instilling good work ethic in kid and kids and discipline and sure. that's kind of, you know, regimented and schedules and all that stuff. I, I think that's important, and especially as they get older. You know, if, if they know they have to be at the gym for three hours a day and then they start to eat better because they don't want to waste all that money that their parents yeah. spending on training. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's just it's life skills. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think I think those are different kind of things that, that I want to bring to the table and then see what we can do around here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so well said, Danny, like life skills, man, common sense. You and I both kind of lived a similar, like not a similar path, but you know, we both kind of bailed and took off from, from where we lived in small town and kind of went out and and saw the world. Yeah. And it's so important. That is experience that you cannot get from a book. You yeah. cannot get it from anything. You know, look at the contacts you made. You did so – you did very well for yourself, dude. Yeah. And I think yeah. to have you back in Nova Scotia, we'd definitely be happy to have you. Yeah, yeah man. Well, it's, you know, it's definitely – what the, what do they say? Because Mother Day is this weekend. It's like home is where your mom is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah. out to Joe and Mac in there. A yeah. wonderful yeah. lady. Wonderful exactly. Lady. Yeah. Are, you guys, are you guys able to see the comments? We got no. a quest- There's a question here from Ryan Marchand. Okay. Says, that- uh, have you ever trained Brian McNamara, or is he just <laughs> naturally gifted? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if naturally gifted in the world. <laughs> you know, maybe twenty-two on the right <laughs> side coming down. Yeah, maybe uh, naturally crazy, but uh, <laughs> no, he's. He's like may, maybe maybe now that I'm oh. back in Picto a little bit, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll see what he can see what he can really do, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, old BMAC. Show yeah. to Brian McNamara. Yeah, for Amherst, sure. I don't know. Is he, uh, Amherst Junior High, best teacher. I, I think ele- elementary. elementary. Yeah. He's elementary. more of an elementary guy. Yeah. Oh, old oh, Brian Mac Marshawn, what a guy! I love that yeah. fella. I knew he was excited about this episode. I saw him comment earlier. Eh? Yeah, it was a class act. That fella, good guy, real yeah. good guy. One of the best in Glasgow. So, no man, you're you're a great fella, and I got to thank you for joining us, dude. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get you on in a, in a future date. We were talking about that. Maybe get one of the players on that you've trained or something. Yeah, like that. for sure. I think I think a lot of them would be interested. So it's, you know, it's just kind of bringing a whole new vibe to it, and be cool to you know have some people hear what they have to say for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Testimonials, buddy. Good testimonials. Yeah. Good tape. You can never have enough of those. Like, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, all right, we'll, guys. I, I hope you have a yeah. wonderful night, man. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. Lots of love to you, buddy. Enjoy. Thanks for having. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Eh. See you guys. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah, man. No, it's, uh, it's quite a, quite a life he's lived. 
Yeah, super, uh, super smart fella. Been around the game a long time. So yeah. it's funny, you know, like as as friends, you know, like you just branch out and you know what people are doing, but you, you kind of revisit it 10 years later and you're like, wow, look at these people, you know, like actually followed the dream. And yeah, it's like Evan, you know, leading into Evan here next, you know, like he's a guy. Unlike me who lives in Picto and always has. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just no. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you I, lived in, like I lived in Toronto for a year. Hey, how about you put yourself down first, and then I'll put myself down, and we'll make it a game. We'll make it a game here, so you can t- talk shit about one another. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, how depressed are you today, Danny? Yeah. Oh, I, I feel horrible. That's <laughs> awful. So, <laughs> but but no, but no, but no. Oh, fuck! You threw it. You ruined my thought. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah, you yeah. picked though. You did like again. Anyway, I'm not butting. I'm not buttering your hole up. Let's get into yeah. our second guest here. Uh, Evan, I don't know where butter your hole came from either. It was just right off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's a new one. Evan, Evan, <laughs> Is a, a guy we both know. A guy who's been a huge part of our events from the very beginning. Um, you know, when I call him, uh, I, uh, this technically I would say is his title, online security expert. The guy is, uh, he works in a security, I can't tell you the company he works for, but uh, extremely, extremely talented and very, very smart in this facet of business. And he also has his own business on the side, um, you know, so he's a smart businessman, but it's it'll be interesting to talk to him to see exactly what can go wrong you know especially in this day and age with like even this app we're using like there's so many different things that you know people don't know yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> Evan English. let's bring him in fucking daddy oh, yeah. hey fellas how you doing welcome to the show Evan English hey, how man. Are you, sir? thank you thanks for having me what's up yes how yes. you guys are making out <laughs> Surviving, hanging in there. Danny's drunk over on my right, but he's yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with it's that. Good. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, anybody just joined us here? This is Evan English. Uh, how are you making out throughout this COVID nineteen? You're in New Brunswick, so things are a little yeah. Better. It's uh, I guess from a province standpoint, things are uh, you know pretty good. We're uh, kind of flattening the curve, as they say, and yeah, um, you know, our cases are quite a bit down. And but I mean, it's still a concern out there, and things are are still shut down for the most part. I think we have like a, a bubble family we can hang out with is kind of our luxury we have here in New Brunswick. Who's uh, your where you can choose, uh, well, we have the in-laws, uh, the ah, Paul's yes. parents, so they were down on the weekend. Uh, so you can choose like one family and uh, you can go to their place and they can come to your place, but that's about it. Hmm. Uh, so, I mean, that's good. I, I imagine everybody would love to at least have that, right? Where you could maybe get some relief from the yeah. kids or <laughs> or, uh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Damn, that would be pretty so nice, but um, yeah. I mean, um, my uh, my wife works in healthcare as well, so uh, I've kind of been entrenched in the, the COVID deal uh, a little bit. But uh, I mean, I love her; she's uh, she's going to work every day and working extra hours and uh, kind of putting that grind in, right? So it's uh, thank you. It's good we have those types of people out there, right? So, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, all yeah. I have to do is kind of stay home and and stay put and. You know, put on pajama pants in the morning, and you know, I'm all set type thing. So uh, <laughs> that's by I mean, choice. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's true though, man. Like, you go back to it. You like how many people are talking about this? Whether it will actually change something or not, you know, like athletes like making thirty million dollars. You know, and I'm a fight mm. promoter. Don't get me wrong, but you know, there's got to be some more equality. You realize who the true heroes are in the world and who's keeping us going, right? And it's people like your wife who are going to yeah. work every day, wearing extra equipment, washing their hands 7 million times, listen yeah. to the whiny ass people. Oh, that's on a regular day. And now it's probably 10 times harder, right? So yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. uh, Lots of it's love challenging, but, uh, it's one of those things you just do, right? I guess. And, uh, you kind mm-hmm. of try to make the best of it, but, uh, hopefully we get, uh, well, we will, I guess, and get through this and get rolling again, and uh, at least yeah. uh, be back to something of uh, normal. Well, uh, yeah, life. you guys, you guys seem to be doing pretty good, though. Like in New Brunswick, compared to us, like I see they're uh, they they got the they're ramping up border security, I guess, for uh, between Nova Scotia Absolutely. and New Brunswick. I see. <laughs> oh, they're ramping it up. Yeah, well, that's, that's, I was reading something about it today. Yeah, but um, really. Yeah. yeah, well, you have like, I mean, it's no, no offense, I guess, to Quebec or anything like that. I mean, they're yeah. just going through a, a higher yeah. uh, rate of exposure. Uh, they yeah. got a bigger province for one. Um, but I mean, 
we don't really want to take chances on you know having that kind of grow oh, yeah. our numbers so i think yeah. everybody wants to just shut down and, and yeah. try to take the safest approach and yeah there'll be um, no more people smuggling beer from quebec no that's Brunswick. right um that's true there's a lot of that that goes on not myself but uh, there are a lot of individuals <laughs> that uh, partake in that activity yeah yeah that's uh, did that guy ever win that lawsuit i don't know if he ever won it or what but what's uh, i'm not sure I don't know if it was Quebec to Nova Scotia or was he New Brunswick to Nova Scotia? I can't remember, but there was a guy who, Evan, you might know the story better. Oh, really? I, I mean, you hear about it all the time, I guess, or used to. New Brunswick has kind of lowered their prices a bit. Yeah. That's where they were losing yeah. out on that border crossing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it happened like, you know, on the daily type thing. And oh, the guys yeah. getting uh, the odd pullover or, you know, guys stuffing like a, a Pepsi box going across the border of Maine, what's <laughs> full of beer, you know, anything they could, they could do to get away with, you know, yeah. saving $10. Yeah. Yeah. Jail, yeah. jail sentence, $10. I don't know. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. pros and cons, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Decision. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. You imagine what the border is going to be like now moving forward. Like, yeah, that yeah, should be uh, interesting. Airports, borders. Uh, I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a different scene. And, and I mean, they're going to try a lot of things and try to get it right. And they don't know the answers right now. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. I mean, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, I think, and some frustration along the way. But yeah. I didn't like the borders before all this. I mean, we uh, no, absolutely we, not. We we were coming back with the family last summer from Maine, and they had. I don't know if it was a random thing or what, but they ended up searching the whole car and tearing it all apart it was just me and me and the wife and the two kids like it was just crazy like and a kilo of coke <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah my kids my kids are drug mules yeah, yeah. yeah. some yeah. some people's are probably yeah well, maybe I, I, yeah, I, yeah maybe i went through there one time with a tour uh with a group and <laughs> you guys might know evan i'm pretty sure you know the story i don't know if you do danny but we went through and the guy, this guy was sitting beside me at the front and he was sweating and he started talking to me and he kind of had this like thick, like Eastern European accent. And I was like, okay, what's this? Like we get to the border crossing and he, I'm like, you go first. So the, how it works there is they take us all off and we all wait. And I sit at the front of the line and I let them go through until every officer calls. Then at, when they're done, they're supposed to sit on the stone, uh, on this little stone bench anyway. So he goes first. And then everyone else is done about 20 minutes later and he's still sitting on the bench and they, they have his documents and they're not coming through. So about an hour and a half goes by and we're still waiting and still waiting and finally go find out. So his wife bought him this cruise. We were going on a cruise. His wife bought him this cruise and trip. It was like $10,000 between the two of them. Anyway, go to find out that the, he, he had like a an assault, like a sexual assault charge from like 1960 something in like former Yugoslavia that she didn't wow. know about. So she found out that day that when they couldn't go across the border that he like had an assault charge and found out that they weren't going on the cruise. Uh, so uh, that's an awkward uh, yeah, conversation, awesome. I guess. He's like, I love you, man. I'm like, oh, dude, I don't even know who you are, man. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> You're staying here. See you later, Captain. Yeah, that's uh... yeah. So they had to get themselves back. Like the company, I think, arranged it or whatever. But yeah, you just never know. It's probably like, at least that cruise is probably at least his problems at that yeah. point. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You really yeah. think about that. Like, where would that man be right now? Right. Like, if she just like they were married for like thirty years. Like this guy, like thirty. Sorry, I forgot yeah. to tell you about this. I yeah. was in jail. Like was, some like, Dateline yeah. type stuff. You know, you yeah. see on now. Uh, TV yeah, or, he was freaking yeah, out too with a head of him in a room and he was like Whoa, getting all mad but he had like a cane and could barely walk so he was taking the cane smashing the wall and shit they had their hands on the gun they're like sir and i'm like we're out like just let me yeah. out of here like scary stuff right you know Man. so i guess that brings me to my point evan like how in a long-winded roundabout way um like to me, I look at a person like you, like a, an online security person. Like, what's a technical job? What's a technical? Well, I like what I basically do. I mean, I'm kind of in all realms of it, I guess, to some degree. But uh, like, uh, information security is is kind of a big uh, thing right now. I mean, that kind of teeters into cybersecurity and that sort of thing. But uh, the main thing you're protecting at most times is you know information. That's what the value is. So. Um, that's online or at different companies or in your own household type thing, right? So it's uh, that's that's what you're protecting. That's the value. Does that involve websites too? Like, 
Yeah, well, usually like any website would have like, you know, information contained in a website or a database that's hooked on to a website that maybe has okay. like, you know, your information in it or, you know, your credit card info or your, your home address or maybe your like SIN number or, you know, all kinds of information that can kind of open up the doors to, a, you know, a lot of problems in your life or, uh, you know, a lot of problems for companies, especially um, if you don't protect that properly. And uh, as you guys see, you know, you have headlines pretty well on the weekly on, on some breach that happened with whether it's, you know, <laughs> Facebook that we're on right now or, you know, PlayStation. Zoom, for example, Zoom is a big one right now. I mean, uh, especially with the growth of Zoom, uh, I yeah. probably most people listen or you guys have probably used it, yeah. um, especially with COVID going on. You know, people need to use these uh, video conferencing solutions, um, whether it's for business or just to hang out with family or friends. Um, but they, you know, kind of grew to a point where they had a lot of vulnerabilities that put people at risk, frankly. And, um, you know, a lot of them have been fixed, um, but it was just bad practice. And, and it kind of makes you, I guess, a little aware. I mean, at the end of the day, people, people are scared of it a little bit, but they take the convenience and, you know, yeah. or maybe the cool, the cool yeah. factor over what maybe could happen. Yeah. Right? And I think that, yeah. that happens in a lot of aspects of life sometimes too, but, uh, it's very um, true. Yeah. You know, if they have the cool backgrounds that you can kind of set and zoom, so people are like, I'm not using something else. I need my cool background. I don't care if it's unsecure. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't care if you can steal all my money. I got this fucking yeah. trees behind me, man. Like, yeah, look at this floor. Exactly. Hey, and I mean, for the most part, like people that are talking with friends and stuff like that, you're just carrying on. Maybe you have a few drinks and, and catching up. Most things aren't probably going to be too sensitive, maybe a little embarrassing at times, but uh, yeah. For companies, I mean, they're, you know, you have governments using it for, um, you know, Congress meetings, things like that, or, or sensitive information at companies yeah. uh, where, you know, somebody that like, gets a hold of that, you know, your next forecasted release or some feature you're bringing into your product yeah. that gets released to a competitor, say, yeah. you know, that really uh, can be damaging. And oh, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of where Zoom and some of these, um, different avenues can kind of hurt you, right? It's uh, So did they take, like, did they even, like, basically, they were a company that was out there, COVID happened, they kind of developed this app kind of shoddy, pretty much, it blew up, and now, but realistically, if you kind of put it the way you said, maybe the lawsuits will basically drain them from all the profits they made already, you know, like, because Possibly. of the workmanship. I mean, I, I think their flip side of the, the, the story, I guess, in, in their mind was, you know, they developed it from a business perspective. So their tool was more catered towards uh, business. I get you. Um, so like they would have an IT team, for example, that would know how to set some of these security settings that weren't enabled by default uh, or, you. you know, know how to configure or train their users on how to use it properly. Um, and then this COVID thing happened. Everybody was like, you know, I can use Zoom for free. I can. I, I heard about it at work. I'm gonna start using it. And then, you know, they weren't setting some of these things. But I mean, I guess in my mind, that's a bit shoddy, right? Because that should be the default. And if you want to turn yeah. that crap off, then then go ahead and do it. But don't yeah. like set somebody up that they need to find this hidden, yeah. you know, toggle switch to make themselves secure. Mm. And uh, you know, kind of why did they know, do that? Leave these people being exposed. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's. I mean, I could I could probably go on a little bit about it, but yeah. uh, I think it's just poor execution on their parts. Um, sometimes. Um, also, like the convenience part outweighs the security, right? So people people want to be able to join easily and they don't want to like, oh, I don't want to have to enter my email and my yeah. password. And, you know, I don't want to enter like this 20 digit code yeah. just to get into a, a conference, right? They just want that easy, like click this button and yeah. I'm in. And which is awesome, but you yeah. get a flip side to that where there isn't kind of that balancing act of, okay, let's make it usable, but like keep it secure, right? So yeah. it's mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a balancing act. You can't go one way or too far one way or the other and it doesn't uh work so out well so by the way anyone who's been on the podcast we know we now have your sin number <laughs> yeah we've been uh, harvesting <laughs> harvesting information here yeah, so. facebook probably does but uh i don't <laughs> yeah. have it right yeah. No, no. yeah that's right but it's it's like you're a cop almost like that important like you're like people don't i don't necessarily you know think about it that way like oh he's he's but if you really think about it, like every company almost has their own like police force, 
Yeah, it's, I guess, to some weird way, I guess. Yeah, I don't have a bad food, or, right? I, or, I'm art. Don't, I don't eat many donuts or anything, but uh, I guess, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, geez, Modo. we could, uh, oh, it is, um, you know, it is kind of similar, right? So it's, you're protecting something, you know, police officers protect the public, people, you know, communities, whatever, and you're just protecting information. I mean, people are obviously more important than information, but um, to companies, um, it's kind of the people of, of their, you know, their value, I guess. So, yeah. Is that how you started into computers? Like, or did you graduate into the, into security? Like, um, yeah, I think, well, like, you know, I think both you guys probably know I've been into computers quite a, quite a long time. Um, it wasn't always security focused, probably the last 10 years to 12 years was probably primarily security focused. Um, but I mean, you know, I was just kind of one of those kids, like that, that's what I did. You know, I would kind of right. come home from, from school or, or playing sports or whatever, kind of set my backpack down, which should have been probably doing homework at the time, but I would be on my computer doing whatever till four in the morning, get up for school at eight and do it every single day. You know, it was mm. just, that's what I did. Um, and you kind of learn a lot that way. I mean, I didn't know everything off the hop and I still don't know everything. Um, but you kind of just tinker and play and, you know, there was a lot of like little weird, like hack stuff, like back then that you yeah. kind of do that was interesting to a kid. Like, you know, there's probably some guys that I've done it to that are on the call maybe, but, uh, like you would be able to, you know, back then there wasn't a lot of security. So you'd send like, maybe like, uh, like an IRC room or whatever, or your buddy, like a file and say, you know, check this out. And then you just click on it and you know, oh, that didn't work out. Oh, don't worry about it. But then you have like a, a, a back door into his system um, that you'd be able to, you know, browse his whole machine, um, you know, Did grab that, files. Yeah. Wow. And um, so like at that time where like, you'd have like dial up internet, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself obviously, but uh <laughs> Uh, so you'd have dial up internet and you'd like, you know, your parents at the time would be paying like $30 or whatever. And you get 20, 20 hours a month or whatever yeah. it was. So I'd eat that up in like a day, you know, oh, like yeah. I got 29 more days to survive here. So <laughs> I would utilize this to kind of grab uh, passwords and logins for the dial up services from, from other people. So I could start harvesting hours off all these individuals <laughs> and then they're probably getting shit from their parents. I was, I still had my internet. Right. So that's awesome. It was, um, it's kind of, you just survived that way, but it was also kind of a, you know, a little unethical and, and probably not the coolest thing to do, but, um, it was, you know, a good learning experience on how some of these things worked um and kind of being able to expose that right so it was uh kind of an interesting i mean it still goes on to this day like i mean not to that level because you know people have firewalls and they have you know some protection in place but you know these phishing emails which i think most people have probably heard about to some degree um you know somebody sends you an email maybe it has an attachment in it like a pdf or like a an excel file or maybe a link and you click on that and it might even open to something that looks usable, but in the background, some codes running that kind of puts that back door similar to what I uh, kind of did back in yeah. 1996 or five or whatever it was. Um, so the same thing kind of goes on right now, but um, it's oh, a little it's, more complicated, I guess. There's, it seems they're all over the place, these phishing emails. Like, I'm, I'm certain I get them like at least once a week, you know, there's, there's yeah. something that comes in and, uh, it's just like, sometimes they look so legitimate too. Like you just don't yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And that's what, you know, these guys, they have an army of people. Like they, they were on this, like these fishing campaigns, like they'd have a, like a corporate office almost overseas, maybe in like, you know, outside Moscow or something where they have 300 people working there and they're either doing, you know, spam calls, phishing emails, ransomware, trying to like, you know, um, get people's money or information at the end of the day. Right. So it's, it's run as a corporation and it's huge money. These people are making billions of dollars uh, off, yeah. you know, people's just making a mistake. And that's a lot of times the issue, right? You, you can have all the firewalls and, you know, you know, you can have locks on your door, but if, somebody's going to open the door and, and the one individual, you know, the chain breaks and, and it's something simple. Yeah. That, yeah. You, that's usually how a lot of these things happen. It's right. It's not, it's not some like Neo guy from the matrix sitting on his computer, 
you know, just pounding away on keys. I mean, that happens sometimes, but a lot of times it's, you know, some Slim Jim at his keyboard out front that, you know, clicked on a phishing email and he let the people in, you know, just no problem. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's how do you train your staff not to it's a big them. thing yeah oh, so we yeah. have like a big security awareness program and that actually takes a lot of like what i run um you know on a on an ongoing basis i guess where we have to you know train new hires on mm. what to look for how to report it you know what to kind of not do what how to identify phishing emails um and, and i mean it's it it's a good thing and I think you have to do it, but it's not, you know, there's always a mistake that can happen. And uh, it's just trying to minimize that mistake and the damage that that one mistake can do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, All right, I'm gonna turn this off right now. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, I was talking with like the Zoom, the Zoom deal, like one of their vulnerabilities was like, they could enable your camera and your microphone without you knowing. Yeah, that's like that was a zero day yeah. vulnerability that someone found. <laughs> and that happens all the time. It's, it's uh, so yeah, clo cover your use one of those little, you know, webcam covers yeah. or lock yeah. your computer, shut your computer when you're not using it for uh, yeah. for Zoom. Sorry, yeah. Dude. I was just going to say for Zoom was it was it just accusations like or or did anything actually no, deal? it was uh, it was full full but full deal for sure. They had like um I mean, three probably really big vulnerability, that being one of them. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times what happens is like a lot of these companies, uh, like good companies have like a bounty program, they call it. So they like, you know, encourage security analysts to try to find bad things in their software, try to find something bad on their website. And if they report it to them before releasing it to the public, so all these other people can start, you know, being malicious about it, their team can fix it up. They pay those people, you know, it could be like 75 grand uh, uh, a vulnerability that they find. Um, and that's how usually it works. But a lot of these, and also these companies, you know, some people might say you have this vulnerability, you have 90 days to fix it, or I'm going to, I'm going to send it to the public. They'll just kind of be procrastinate about it and not actually, you know, follow through with it or not fix it in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. uh, and then these, these kids will eventually just post it online and then it's, uh, it's fair game. Wow. And it's kind of a race, right? Like if that guy found it. There's somebody kind of behind him or maybe mm -hmm. already did find it a year ago and just didn't say anything about it. Right. So it's mm -hmm. uh, scary that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. It is scary. Cause it's funny you say that because I was sitting, setting this up today, like setting up the stream and literally sitting in front of this with no shirt on. <laughs> no in my underwear. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't join in there. Just sitting here and I was sitting there doing it and I was looking, I'm like, how funny would it be right now if someone could see me like just sitting here in yeah. my underwear like, yeah. oh. pretty uh pretty scary and it, yeah. it, it definitely can happen i mean it's um if steve i mean, just called you zero cool do you know who zero, zero cool, cool is no uh, from, maybe i am probably zero from, cool on the scale from, of uh zero to ten maybe <laughs> that's, <laughs> right, yeah. that's what the, i thought you said yeah. like, this dude is zero cool <laughs> the movie the hackers world. it's from hackers Oh, okay, hackers. cool. Yeah. Right on. I, know, I, I, I got what you're saying now. I yeah, thought you were just yeah. Steve's commenting that I'm zero cool, which which I might be a point five, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, point no. Zero you're has 10. been a, a you're ten out of ten, but you're a hell of a good guy, man. A great guy. Yeah, so that's you know, it's. I mean, it's nothing to really be paranoid about. But you just got to be safe and. So how does someone your, be safe then? What are they like? I mean, like the like from a user standpoint or just at home or maybe like some people have like a side business or a, a small business even i mean they're very vulnerable because they usually don't have a team or like they don't have the money to like invest in security products mm -hmm. uh but like the easiest way is like you know update your stuff like install updates like it's probably the biggest way people exploit these things um if you don't like install windows updates for example you know it seems very basic and most people are like that's annoying i don't want to reboot and mm -hmm. i don't want i don't want to have to go through that hassle right but uh if you at least do that and update your applications and your your os you know you can have like most people back in the day would install you know norton, norton antivirus and be like okay mm -hmm. i'm good and <laughs> maybe you were at that time but uh, without these updates you have so many people out there that are researching trying to find these vulnerabilities and trying to test where they can break this application that 
the, the company's already fixed it most times, but people don't update them. So that's where they get those mm -hmm. vulnerabilities yeah. happen to their machine. Yeah. You don't think and these are well. That. Yeah, absolutely. And they're well known. Like these guys can run applications and just go, okay, this machine's vulnerable. This one's vulnerable. You know, and they can yeah. just, they know what to look for where those vulnerabilities mm -hmm. exist. If you just didn't take the 10 minutes and apply the patches, yeah. they start going into yeah. your system, right? I mean, other things are just, and passwords is a big thing. Like passwords is probably by the number one, maybe number two thing. Uh, I don't know which one comes first, but um, passwords, like um, it's you reusing passwords is a big one. You know, like a lot of people do it. I mean, probably everybody in the room right now is guilty of it, I'm sure. Yeah, I got but, one. Um, Not me, bud. I mean, most people, <laughs> like, 700 you, of them. most yeah, people they, might have like remember one. one or two, like, passwords. Maybe they have, like, their really strong password, and then they have, like, their, their shit password, right, they use for whatever. Yeah. But the problem with that is, like, um, these websites, like, one company might get a breach happen, so then their whole password database gets exposed like on the dark dark net or or wherever but then they start utilizing that same login and password on all these other sites so they may have not have been ever at breach but they're using your same login credentials so you have you know risk of like you know, losing your data so if you can use you know like a long long as possible password i know that's annoying too but uh, as long as long as possible um, and try to use a different password for every site. And I know people have probably 500 sites to go to, but you can use tools like password managers, stuff like that, where you, and, and some people would argue, you know, you kind of have all your, all your, passwords every, all your eggs in one, in one basket type yeah. thing. But uh, if you can have one massive secured password and then everything inside of there has a random generated password, yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot safer than using the same password for every site. Um, absolutely. So those, and then, you know, like uh, encryption on your, on your machine, like, um, so most, most operating systems like Apple or even Windows 10 now has encryption. Uh, so you're gonna enable that with like a click basically. And what that does is like, say if somebody broke into your business or your house or mm -hmm. stole it out of the backseat of your car, for example, um, if they were to remove the hard drive out of it, they can't read that information um, easily anyway. It's very difficult um, and almost impossible on a lot of cases. So it protects you from somebody physically like stealing your laptop and then being able yeah. to just plug it into like a USB drive and, and grab all your data. Yeah. So stuff like that. I mean, no, I mean, there's all kinds of other things as well, but uh, I think a lot of times if you can take care of those, you know, three main things, have your antivirus on, I think that takes care of some low line fruit for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of times those other items are, are a lot more important. What are your well, thoughts on Norton antivirus? Norton antivirus? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's all right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I always heard the rumor. I'm a Mac user. Obviously, we're all Mac users for the most part. Uh, Is Norton... Are those? I always hear the rumor that they were like vir. They were they were in, like virus. How the fuck am I trying to say? Like that they were made. Um, they were made by the same company who sold you the computer, basically. Like, like McAfee was owned by or McAfee was owned by Microsoft. You know, I, a Microsoft lot of them had I think partnerships. Like a lot of times they'd have partnerships, like where they give their software for X amount of months free if you bought like a Dell or yeah. or whatever. Um, and I imagine they they share probably information at times yeah but um yeah norton to answer danny's question i mean norton's fine it's you know as long as you have it updated and it's yeah. decent but like even like windows defender that's built into yeah. windows 10 yeah. now that's yeah. a decent antivirus it used to be shit, right like uh most times you'd be like okay i gotta disable that and go to best buy and get a yeah. get a decent antivirus but the one that actually comes with it now is is probably better than a lot of uh items, especially with a small couple small tweaks yeah, uh, it, it works quite well. See, I use I use a vast. I don't know if that's any good or not. Like that in combination with Windows Defender or whatever. But like, I don't know what because uh, I the first I always see I always find uh, when I get a new computer, Norton was on it. I always seemed to slow it down for whatever reason. Like, yeah, but um, but yeah, I never had any problems with the vast, and I'm I'm not plugging it or anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, seems, I think it, uh, it gives you right. that bit of. 
it gives you that bit of protection. I mean, it's like, again, with, with all those other items, kind of like a layer and def like yeah, defense yeah. and, you know, in layers type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't do everything, but it does yeah. help a little bit and yeah. kind of layer that on top of some of those other, uh, items in your, your, and then don't click on stupid shit or don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't Holy go word. to page 19 yeah. of Google results, you know, and start yeah. clicking on dot are you, URLs and stuff yeah. like it just you're going into kind of the trouble bill. So somebody somebody's giving away 150 pieces of Sony PlayStation 4. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see those ads? Oh no. yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> really? I mean somebody yeah. 150 if they, if pieces. They, if they keep doing them, I mean somebody's obviously falling falling for it on a, on yeah. a consistent basis. So it's uh, that's kind of shocking as well, but. Uh, well, the thing, like, like I don't know. Shout out to my mom and dad. Like, the, I love them to death. But I don't know how many times I got to show her how to search something on YouTube. My mm. dad, the microphone, you can be like, search Bee Gees. Or whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? Or whatever, right? But, like, yeah. it, it's funny. So if you look, and they're actually very smart for, the, like, they've came a long way. But you look at a lot of other people who don't have that help or are kids that could help them. And you get an yeah. email, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, click this, you're, your bank account has been, you know, yeah. whatever. And then you get that email and you're, you're a senior. That's scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it, that's what they, you know, I think seniors have always been a target of you know, scams and uh, whether that's on a phone or on a computer or whatever, I think they're, they're always vulnerable to that just because of their generation. Right. And, and, uh, terrible. uh, ours has gotten a little better. I think we're still a little bit like millennials and, and kind of, uh, I don't know what the next generation's called, but uh, whatever they are there, I mean, they kind of are born with some sort of tablet or laptop strapped to them. So they're uh, probably a little farther ahead. Yeah, true enough. True enough. Any final questions for uh, Evan English, Danny Harvey? Jeez, we got to get you out on another event. Here. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'd guy. like to, uh, <laughs> once we, I know that would be probably one less thing. Uh, Maybe Derek's screaming at you about so it's uh, it'd be good. It's uh, it's a lot of fun though. Yeah, it's for anybody who isn't aware. Like going back to Submission Series Pro, you know Adam Frazier's not in the stream right here, or Nick O'Leary. Those are other big guys, but you two were the big parts behind that those events. Like every event, it, you two are the ones that did it. So uh, now that I have you both here in front of me, I love you both. So thank you for that because none of them really would have taken like we would not be to this point in fight league atlantic without the two of you so a lot of the east coast community owes you a lot when it comes to combat sports you guys have both killed it and i think we'll continue doing it you know it's a uh, it's we have a good team man yeah it's um yeah. it's come a long way and i think with you know investing in the right gear and having you know danny uh that's you know knows broadcasting and in technical itself inside and out uh yeah makes a difference right when you have uh, somebody doing that so it's uh and it gives you that professional quality and, and yeah uh, looks good right <laughs> you missed it at the last event so uh, again danny looks after uh the internet when evan's not around or sometimes in the venue or something so at last last event we had the, we had a 150 foot run or something anyway so we tested it and i'm running around doing a million things i don't know i just know that danny's doing what he's doing i know danny's doing what he's doing it's going to be perfect yeah, all of a sudden, about like 15 minutes before the show, he's like, the internet's not working. Someone <laughs> stepped on the line. The line's freaking out. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, you know, you're going live on a pay-per-view. And then that big guy, security guy, wanted to fight me. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm actually, sorry. I wanted to fight him. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't let you in. He wouldn't let me in. But anyway, he was a nice guy. He up to Titan Security. They did a great job. And, uh. So that was me being an idiot, just all worked up. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was I remember uh, there was there was one event. I think I was like in Miramichi or something. Like it was that? like Thanksgiving dinner or something Who like that. Derek calls me up and he's like, "Dude, the stream is not working." And then <laughs> I was like, "Well," or they changed something. I think in in YouTube or something like yeah. that, or like wherever we were streaming it through, they changed something. So I was like, yeah. "The only other option is those options we looked at before that are you know they, they cost quite a bit of money." Yeah, yeah. So he's just like, do it, man. Just do it. I don't care. But I'm like, he's got like four minutes to I gotta yeah, like yeah. sign up for a service, <laughs> try to like plug it into that system or give it to Danny or something. And like, Brutal. Yeah. it was just like, I was like, you're going to need to like, give me 15 minutes to it. So yeah, you yeah. like went and stalled for 15 or something. That was That's the only event fun. I think we're ever late. That was the Kuma. Yeah. Time. 
Yeah. Well, you made it happen, so and it turned yeah, out no one, no one, yeah, knew the, no one knew the no one knew the difference. And oh. Well, we, uh, Paula, we got Paula's through family it. knew the difference. Shout out to uh, the, <laughs> the crafts and sorry for ruining your Thanksgiving. So, uh, <laughs> I, I only had like a quarter of the mashed potatoes left. I think so that was done. <laughs> that's the thing. So many people have no idea, and that's why it's so important to tell people when they do a good job and and help you out. Like you guys both have been behind me all the way, and. And I truly mean that. Like, none of this stuff could have ever been possible without you guys. So, I thank you very much for that. Very, I appreciate very it. Uh, anytime, anytime you yeah. need a hand, I, I don't mind. Uh, as long as well, I can, if I can get away, I can be there in person. Sometimes I can't, but uh, yeah, I can yeah. definitely help where I can. And, well, fingers crossed, it, it won't be too, too long now. We can tell yeah. I just had a great, for anybody who's wondering, we had a, I had a great conversation with the commission yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, uh, things are looking good. Um, so once uh, we can get the events back to under 50 and uh, the gyms are open, it looks like we're good to go. So, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, oh, we got a question. Where's the Griff at? <laughs> uh, the, Griff? Oh, the Griff, the Griff's upstairs. He's, uh, he's probably sleeping as usual. <laughs> well, man, I gotta, again, before I, I let you go, buddy, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you know, I talk to you every day, but I love you lots and, and you're a hell of a guy and you mean a lot to me and, and mean a lot to the promotion, buddy. So any final words and, and sponsor, or, I don't know, any, any, <laughs> uh, any shout out you want to give to Griff or uh, uh, No, or? just, uh, <laughs> just you guys are doing a great job and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You know, like this is a good outlet for people. Just uh, have a an hour to listen to you know fighters or me talk about technology i don't know if that was it was good but yeah, uh, i mean it's awesome. just something to listen to right and uh it gets people a little break from maybe the day-to-day -day and just staring at a wall right so keep doing what you're doing and keeping on doing your good events and you guys are killing it so keep doing what you're doing thank you man man well we're a team Team Fightly Atlantic, and we'll we'll all keep on keeping on. So lots of love to you, lots of love to Paula and her team up there in uh, in the hospital in St. John for keeping everybody safe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks to any of those people working on the front lines as well. So Evan English, my man, thanks for so, joining. Cheers, See guys. You guys. Best See you, man. Thanks, pal. Later. There you go, folks. Evan English. That was cool, Danny. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. I you know you don't really realize what happens like behind yeah. big companies and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and you like again, you're you're super techno. Fuck, I can't even. Talk that's over. Stuff. That's over my head, man. That stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's really neat though to think about like how many times you sign up for something and it's just like, yeah. Oh, I know. Every except. day, like every day, like you just well, even like. <laughs> This. Like any app you download, you're oh, just yeah. giving them all your information. Well, no it's problem. and it's getting worse and worse all the time. Like, allow well, access to this and that and this and that, and you know, yeah. just yeah, you can't even apply for a job now without giving them your information. You know, yeah. like you're obviously given a resume, but you got to give you know you have to create an account and like it's just a bunch yeah. of fools. Oh, it's right? re it's really important to have people like that, you know, to to kind of combat these hackers. <laughs> no pun intended with the combat. It, yeah. It. And it's true, like he, he's like an online police officer, right? Like I really yeah. like every company kind of has it that way, right? And it's yeah, like, you know, you, you'd be scared. Like if people, we all see it. Like you think about something, you're like, oh, I need to order vacuum cleaner bags, and then next thing you know, you're on Facebook, and it's like, what? <laughs> That's like the model of vacuum cleaner. I oh, I, I know, need. man. It happens every day. But I didn't even Google it. I didn't even. I just what? thought about it right <laughs> that's what kind of computer i have oh man new yeah. age mac so what's yeah. going on for tomorrow we got a we got a great show on lined up for tomorrow we got our quebec friends on uh faber glace faber glace uh and johan lanis uh they are both from quebec uh, faber owns and hosts the mma talk podcast and uh media page they did a lot of great media for us and covered our event very well Awesome. And uh, hopefully, I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, but uh, Cody Crowley, uh, probably the biggest name in Canadian boxing for sure. One, one of them. I would say the biggest. You know, rosiki has got a big name too, but he's uh, – Cody Crowley, he lives down in, in Vegas. He trains at the UFC, UFC PI every day, and he's uh, – he, He's met with Dana White a couple of times. He's definitely wow. on the radar, yeah. So he's a, he's a kid that he's, he's signed now uh, for the U.S. – like under their kind of management team or whatever, I guess. And he trains down there, but yeah, he's a, 
he's a good kid and he's done a lot of big promotions in Canada and done well for himself, you know. So he's got the, the UFC eye and he's a boxer. So awesome. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So we'll chat with him. But uh, I got to thank you, Danny, for joining us, man. Yeah, uh, of course. Anytime. Yeah, excellent. I, I enjoy it. Well, it's something to do, like Evan said, right? Just kind of shoot the breeze and drink beer. Like you just, you know, that's it. <laughs> What kind, what kind was that? I know that was legit water. No, no, no joke. Uh oh, that's boring. <laughs> We're looking for, uh, uh, I guess, I don't know what's going to happen, but it looks like we have a new uh, uh, liquor sponsor, possibly. Uh, you know, for us, we always want to look work with local local distilleries, or, or but we, I want to work with somebody who's actually believes in us and is going to actually stick with us and grow together. And hopefully, Barreling Tide Distillery. Uh, they seem like great people, uh, and fingers crossed it works out. So, uh, give a shout out to them online, Barreling Tide Distillery. Let's give another shout out to Iron Supplements, Privateer Harley Davidson, Old Road Barbecue, Perpetual Services, BC Kimonos, Datsu Sarah, Under the Gee, and Danny Harvey. See you tomorrow, folks. If you can be anything in this world, be kind. Thanks, Danny. Later. <laughs>